so welcome to the campaign's office hours. Uh, we're going to be talking today about our work. Um, and we want to get some feedback and some thoughts from all of you. We're so excited that you've all been able to join. Um, if you have questions, we are how we, we have a question and answer section at the end. So um, there'll be the time to share any questions you have. Um, so thank you all for attending. Um, and I believe I'll now pass it to Amelda. Thanks, Elida. Uh, hi, all. Uh, welcome to the second campaign part of Office Hours. I am Imelda. I am from the Philippines. I am one of the content campaign fellows of uh, campaigns team. And here with me today is our senior product manager, Alana, senior program officer, Felix, and our UX designer, Gregory, the engineers, the product ambassadors, uh, Anthony, Georges, and Bashenda. Uh, just a few reminders again. We are going to record this call, and at the end of the at the end, we we are going to end the recording during the open forum. So you may choose to turn on your video or turn it off. But we highly encourage everyone to turn off your microphones when you are not speaking. And if you have any questions or comments, you can write it first on our Etherpad, and we'll get back to it during on our discussion at the end. Just a little background. Uh, for everyone here in the meeting, the first campaign product office hour was in September, where we introduced our team and shared some plans on developing tools for campaign organizers. We are all part of a bigger team, the Wikimedia Foundation campaigns team. We are conducting campaign office hours to provide an avenue for us to learn more about campaigns such as new ways in organizing tools and practices also to connect with other organizers both experienced and new organizers and also to share our findings in these experiences with the rest of the community the campaign product team is a software and product development team focused on building tools for campaign organizers we envision to provide software solutions that empower and support campaign organizers. For experienced organizers, we want to simplify their workflows and provide more powerful tools. And for new organizers, we want to make it easier to become effective and long-term organizers. At present, we have three engineers. Next slide, please. We have three engineers and one engineering manager who have recently joined our team. And we also have ambassadors, Bashunda for Arabic communities, Georges for French communities, and Anthony for Swahili communities. They are all present in this call. And this presentation will be in English. However, feel free to ask questions in any of the languages mentioned by sending us a message on the chat, and we will offer any language support we can give. We are also willing to organize a separate office hours for Arabic, French, and Swahili. So for today's office hour, next please. For today's office hour, we are going to share the background of the software that we are developing and its first feature, the event registration tool. Also the possibility of creating new namespaces some updates on the usability test that we conducted, latest design versions, and the timeline of this project. At the end of the session, we will be happy to receive your feedback and suggestion for these updates. I will give the floor to Alana to share more about this exciting tool we are working on. Alana. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alana. I'm the product manager for the team. So I'm going to be talking about some of our project plans and why they think why we think they can provide a lot of value to Wikimedians involved in campaigns. Okay. So uh, to start, we knew we wanted to improve the experience of being a campaign organizer. Uh, campaign organizers do such crucial work and they really deserve our support. But how do we do that? How do we support the organizers? What do we build? What do we change? What do we improve? We needed to figure that out. So to do that, we conducted interviews with over 50 campaign organizers across the movement. And from these interviews, we collected information on some of their top concerns and challenges and their high priority requests. Um, then we synthesized that with research we had from previous research initiatives. And we came up with these top 10, 11 organizer requests. Um, so some of these projects include 
or requests include a central place where people can find tools and resources available to them as organizers, easy ways to create high quality, contemporary looking event pages, better tools to promote campaigns on and off Wiki, improving the ease of finding events for newcomers, an easy on Wiki way to register participants, better tools to communicate with participants and other organizers, better ways to track, analyze, and report impact, and easier ways for participants to receive recognition and find what to do next. Um, also, if you're an organizer and you want to be interviewed by us and you haven't yet, let us know. You could reach out to us or any of the pre presenters today or the product ambassadors. We would love to hear from more people. Uh, so just let us know. So um, now regarding what I previously mentioned about those 11 areas that we can improve, uh, how do we address them? So we felt that the best way to address them is to treat them as interconnected issues that we address at a systematic level. So rather than just saying, mm, number one and two are the most important, we want to have a more generalized way of thinking about this problem area that we can address through a platform. So we're thinking there'll be a two-sided campaign event platform with an organizer side and a participant side. Um, it will be modular, meaning features can be separated and recombined, and we want it to be extensible meaning we'll work on features for the platform, but we're not the only ones who can contribute features, potentially other teams or other volunteer developers can build out features too for the platform. Um, one thing to note that is that will start small. So it will grow over time, but we're going to be building in an incremental way. So we'll have a first project as our first small project. And over time, we'll build more of that project and build out more features overall. Um, so what's our first project? Uh, it's building an on wiki registration system. So now I will talk about that. Okay, so the registration tool or the registration project. Um, so right now organizers use different solutions for handling event registration. Some use on wiki registration solutions uh, like adding a signature to the event page or they'll use external solutions like using Google Forms or Eventbrite. Um, so all of these solutions have problems, but the problems vary depending on which solutions people are using. So generally speaking, the current solutions are time consuming for organizers and they're not integrated with tracking tools like the programs and events dashboard. Uh, as for on wiki solutions, they tend to look and feel outdated and they can be ch technically challenging for newcomers who don't know what to do or how to properly register. Um, they also provide minimal information on participants for the organizers, um, and it can be difficult to do communication with either the participants or uh, other organizers. Um, now, for the off-wiki solutions, they aren't integrated with Wikimedia wikis and workflows. They're difficult for participants to edit. Participants can't see who else joined um, and often, and they're generally not supportive of multilingual communities or the values around privacy that are core of the Wikimedia movement at the level that we would want and hope. Um, but there is one common factor, regardless of whatever solution that's used, which is right now, there is no easy on Wiki way for someone to go to an event page, see some sort of button that says register and just click it and register. That doesn't exist now, and we really want to address that need. Okay, so what's our vision? We want to make it easy for people to join campaign events, and we want to begin collecting more reliable data on campaign activity. Um, so since we've never had a generalized event registration tool, we don't really have reliable statistics as a movement on how many people are organizing events or how many people are participating in events or how many events are just going on in general or what are the different types of events that are going on. Uh, it's hard for us to understand what's going on if we don't have that baseline data and we really want to improve that situation. Um, so with the registration tool, this can change. We can begin to store structured data on campaign activity so we can be more transparent on successes and challenges and gaps and trends. So this can help us grow as a movement and it can also provide uh, data-driven support to organizers so they can make better decisions and feel more empowered to know what's going on. Okay, so next slide. 
Uh, so overall, what benefits does this registration solution provide? Uh, with the registration solution, organizers can get an easier configuration experience, more information on participants, better support for languages, integration with wikis, and integration with tracking tools like the programs and events dashboard. Uh, meanwhile, participants can get an easier event registration experience, an easier account creation experience, a view of other campaign participants, and better onboarding onto wikis. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about before I hand it over to Gregory, our designer, and that's the namespace proposal. So basically, the campaigns team is proposing that we create two new namespaces in MediaWiki, which will be called event and event top. Uh, the purpose of this namespace would be a designated place in the wikis for all events, such as campaigns, conferences, meetups, office hours, or other event types. Um, there's a few reasons why we think this is a good idea, which I'll share. Uh, first, we need to know which pages are event pages so we can do things like add registration to them. So, for example, we don't want to add registration to a Wikipedia article. So if we know, okay, this is a Wikipedia article, that's not where we add registration versus this is a legitimate event page, so it makes sense to add registration there. That's information we want to know to be able to design the system properly. Um, that also means we can do other things in the future, like being able to display all events in a centralized event calendar. So maybe potentially in the future, if someone's creating an event page, they can check some box or something that says add this event to the event calendar, and then it can be automatically added to the event calendar. Um, another reason is you want to be getting more accurate data on event activity as a movement, like how many events are going on, what types of events are going on. This will be a lot easier for us to do if we're able to identify event pages. Um, and third, we want a better user experience. Right now, it can be harder for people, especially if they're newcomers, to know what are the different kinds of pages. So because article pages look so similar to event pages, it can be hard to identify what's an event and that someone can join it, that's a community experience. So we would love to create that distinction so it's more intuitive to all people, especially for newcomers to the wikis. Um, finally, we want to highlight the fact that organizing or participating in events is a critical form of movement activity. So someone can be impactful in more ways than just contributing to the wikis as say an editor. Um, so we would love to know what you think about our overall team plans, our registration project plans, and our proposal to create two new namespaces. So in the question and answer section, please let us know if you have any ideas or thoughts or questions. Um, and now I'll pass it on to my colleague Gregory, the UX designer of the team. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Gregory. Next slide, please. So, so far, we have worked on several iterations of the design for the event center, and uh, we have worked on getting uh, feedback to usability tests. Um, usability tests are, are like people will give um, prototype to members of target audience and get feedback from them on um, how intuitive the um, design or the flow is, and also what, what challenges are with the current design. and. Um, opportunities for improvements. So we just finished um, the, conducting our second usability test. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback, which we are currently uh, implementing. Um, so in the, for in the usability test, we tested with like three um, non-Wikimedians, six Wikimedians. Um, we, also, we also had four female testers and five female testers and five male testers from our countries, from Senegal, Congo, Ghana, Egypt, Rwanda, and been in. So um, from the usability test, uh, the, the participants were okay with the with the um, registration flow. They were able to easily complete the process of creating an event and also registering for an, an event. And they also gave um, good feedback on the um, namespace proposal. Um, some of the challenges that they mentioned were around um, the um, um, around participants difficulties on participants event participants face in um, logging or creating an account. And also, um, and also mentioned about um, currently in their processes, they currently collect phone numbers of participants in registrations. But for the current version of our prototype, we are not collecting phone numbers onto later versions. 
um, they also mentioned some, as far as also mentioned about the possibility of having um, private events or private registrations. I'll talk more about this as I um, go through the uh, prototypes. Next slide. Next slide. So like I mentioned, on, I mentioned earlier, we are working on iterations of the desktop and we're working on um, uh, the first iteration of the mobile design. And I would, I would show you the process currently. The process is, is, is currently a work in progress. So I'll, I'll go through the prototype for, uh, to show the flow of how to create an event or add, I mean, and also how to um, register for an event. So these are the current ideas we have, have in mind on how the flow will be, and we would also love your feedback on it. So I'll proceed to share my screen to present the desktop wireframes. Give me a moment. Hello, Felix, could you, I'm, I'm unable to share my screen correctly. Could you um, send the request again? Okay, kind. yeah, I can. Yes, it's, it's working now. So, I hope you all can see my screen during the the meta wiki page yes okay yeah so um so um the current idea we have to assess the event center is through the user menu drop down at the top right here so when you click on this drop down on the, in the list of items you can see the event center here so when you click on it it takes you to um the landing page for your events so currently like we mentioned earlier we're working on the registration so the current feature we have here is for um, organizers majorly to create um, events. So when you land on this page using the drop down here, um, you can proceed to create an event. So um, and the first step will be to like enter the name of your event, then proceed to um, click on the create new event button. So we we, we currently still utilize the, the process for uh, which you you all use for creating event pages, which is through the um, this edits source edits or the visual editor. Um, so you can come um, put in the necessary information about the event. And um, when you're done with that, you can proceed to publish it. So the major difference here is that when you publish your page, the major difference in this flow is when you publish your page, you get this um, prompt that asks you if you want to enable registration for your event or not. So if you're not ready to enable registration or you're not interested in enable registration, you can dismiss it. But if you later want to enable registration so that participants can register directly from the event page, you can go to the this the, uh, beside the title to click on um, enable registration. So when you click on that, it shows you a form where you, you add additional information about your events. So for example, the date and time for the event, the location of the event. Uh, if it's an online event, you can you can put in the video call link if you want to. If it's a physical event, you can put in the event address. If for sometimes your event could be hybrid, both online and physical, and you could also put in the physical, the, the event address, or you could put in the uh, video call link. And also, um, you could also add organizers, other, other organizers apart from you, who will be helping you manage this event. So the dates you can have access to um, the event page and the participants who register. And another option, which was mentioned earlier, uh, is, is the integration with the tracking tool. So if you have already set up a tracking tool for your event, um, you could just come paste the link here. Currently, the tracking tool we're, we're planning to support first is the program and events dashboard. So if you have set up a tracking tool, a dashboard for your event, you could come paste the link into, into this um, box here. And um, once you are done, it is going to um, connect it with connect your event to the tracking tool. So this means that when participants register for your event, their usernames are automatically checked, taken to the tracking tool. You do not need to access me to come on, copy and paste and um, put the user, their usernames in the tracking tool or ask them to go to the tracking tool themselves and join. So um, the third, uh, the third um, 
form item here is the um, the group chat link. So we added this option so that um, you could put if you have chat groups. For as I know, I mean, many um, organizers have, um, well, for example, WhatsApp chat WhatsApp chat groups for their events. So if you have chat groups, WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook group that you have for, um, I mean, for your events, you could put the link here. So when participants register for the events, they are they can be they are, they are automatically sent the link so they can join the whatever group you have and um for further coming communication. So once you are done with entering the necessary information, you can proceed to enable registration. And once you do that, you see the event page is modified with this widget here, this box here, as you can see, the event page is modified with this box. And um, although from your view, um, from if, if a participant is viewing this page, this button here will show register for events. But since you're an organizer, um, that's not the view you see. You see the manage events button instead of register for event button. So um, you can then, um, Proceed to if if when whenever when whenever participants um, attend your event, register for your event, those you can see the number of participants who have registered. Um, from the event, there's some 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 persons mentioned that they don't want participants to see um, event participants to see um, number of people who have um, registered for events. So that was one of the concerns that was mentioned mentioned by a few people. And also, if you click on more details, you can see the list of participants who have registered for your events. Also. In the usability testing, some organizers mentioned that they might not want the list of participants for their events to be public to everyone. So um, once you are done with that and you want to um, manage your events, like message, message participants, you click on the manage events and you are taken to this page in event center. You can see your events here and uh, you can see number of participants are registered. And when you click on it, you can see the list of participants. And currently, the major actions you can perform are you can send a message to participants, you can select um, the participants, and you can decide to send a message to them. And also, um, if you want to, if, if a need occurs, you can remove the participants from the registration. So um, to send a message to them, you can select the list of participants you want to send a message to, and you can click on send message and enter necessary information about the events that you, um, you, you like to sent to them and you can select how the message will be sent to them. Should it be sent to their emails or via talk page? So for the sending to email, I wanted to note is that um, not all um, Wikimedians, uh, I mean, it's not compulsory for Wikimedians when creating an account to add their emails. So some some participants for the event might have emails attached to their account. So if, if you select email as the method of sending a message, uh, it, will only, it will only be sent to those who have an email attached to their accounts. And, and also when you send it, when they send the email to their email address, um, they won't be able to see the organizer's email or, and also you won't be able to see their email unless they reply to your message. So that's another thing to note. Um, so once you have selected what way you want to send the message, you can proceed to send the message. Yeah. yeah. So currently um, you, 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 they can't reply straight on the platform. Whatever replies to your message will be on via email or via the talk pages. So this is the main flow for uh, for um, the um, creating of an event and managing participants after. So I would proceed to show the flow for how to register for an event from the participant's perspective. So if for a participant who wants to register for events, they visit the event page and they see this um, box here. And they can see the button that says register for events. So um, they can proceed to click on the register for events. And um, if they are not logged in or signed up, if they're not logged in, they are prompted to log in. If they don't have an account, they can click on the create an account button. Um, and where they can create an account. And um, they are prompted to, I mean, and they can proceed to register. Um, so they also shown this information, I mean, notifying them about um, to agree to the terms of use and privacy policy. And if they agree, they can continue to register. So once they do that, they are automatically registered for the event. So for, for version one, we're only collecting the usernames of participants. That's the only data we're collecting from participants, their usernames. We're not collecting any other information like phone numbers and other information. So this is this, are the, this other information will come in in future versions. And we also love your feedback on that also. 
participants can also decide to cancel their registration by clicking on this and um, and they can cancel their registration. So this is the flow for uh, participants registering for an event. So um, I'll, proceed, I'll proceed to show the mobile version, which is a similar um, flow. Um, so we can see here, um, this is the, the events, events landing page I, I showed in on the desktop, but this is the mobile version. So organizers can still proceed the normal way to create an event. So something I forgot to mention in the previous one is um, you can also create an event using the, using the search, the search bar. Um, so when you search for an item, a page that does not exist, um, the normal way on Wikipedia is that you are prompted with the option to create a page for that event. So using, using our event set, you can also create it this way. Although the only difference will be that in the when you're searching for the I for the page, you add this event, the event then with the column. This this will enable us to know that um, the event the page you're creating is for an event. So it is this is the name of the namespace. So before if, if you want to create an event, you add that um, using using this format, writing the event colon then the name of the event that you want to create. And once you, once you do that and you search, and you have shown the create page for event, you can click on it and um, create your event page. And when you publish, you still, you still see the prompt to enable registration. So you can use go straight to the event center or you can use the search bar. So, um, so this is the mobile version. It's still the same flow. You create a new event. You enter um, information about the event. You publish the page and you are given the uh, form to enable registration and fill the, the form and once you do that you your your event page is modified showing this box and when participants have registered you can see the number of participants and you can see um, the names of of participants who have um, registered and if you want to send message to participants you can click on manage events and you can see the list of all the events you have created and when you click on open it up, you can see the details of the events and you can see the participants and you can also proceed to uh, message them. So it's basically the same flow, both for the participants and the, uh, and the uh, organizers on uh, mobile. So for participants, when they visit the event page, they just proceed to click on register for events after reading through the event page. So when they click on that, if they don't have an account, they are prompted to log in. So sorry to join, or if they have an account, they, they can um, log in. So it's still the same flow as that of the uh, desktop. So um, another important point, almost out of time. Another important point um, I wanted uh, wanted to talk about, uh, show is the different entry points for for um, mobile. So for the desktop version, I mentioned that um, if you want to access the event center, you can just click on this use our drop down here and you can see event center here so the was we are still having conversations on what is the best way what would be the best entry point for to get to this event center for on mobile so um we came up with um multiple options um permit me to start with the, the last option option three uh option three to go to the event center um you could use this user menu option, I mean, user menu that comes at the top right here. And on that, when you open it up, you can see the events option for, you can see the event center um, option. And when you click on it, you are taken to the event center. But the major problem with this option is that um, it's, the, this, um, this menu profile icon that appears here only shows if you go, only shows if you um, go to your settings and, um, and enable advanced Enable advanced setup. So this is not this is this profile icon is not shown by default. You have to go to settings and enable it. So this is just one option for um for an entry point to events. The other option is this option two um is using the hamburger menu here. So when you click on this menu at the top left, you can see a list of um items that take you to different pages. So the second the second option will be to add event center as another item on this list. And when you click on it, you are taken to, uh, you are taken to, when you click on it, you are taken to the event center. So the third, or rather the first option, which is this, 
this is something that the um, the web team is working on currently. Um, would be to modify. When, normally, when you open the um, currently when you open mobile when you open this menu, you see in one of the options you see contributions there. So the third option, the, this option will be to modify that that um, contributions page. Normally, when you click, click on the contribution contributions page, it shows you um, a list of your contributions. So, so the another option as an entry point for the event center is, is, is to modify this contributions page and add a list of the various ways that you can contribute. So you can contribute to translations, to edits, to uploading media file or through creating an, an, a, a new page. So this is currently something that's already in the works by other teams in Wikimedia. So uh, for us, for the campaign, for the campaign's team, we are also looking to uh, about the possibility of adding events as as an as another way to contribute on, under this contributions um, menu uh, under this contributions option. So when you click on the contrib contribute, we are taken to this list and you can see um, events. And when you click on it, it takes you to the events. The event center and you can proceed to create an event. So those are basically the three entry points we have in mind to access the event center through this hamburger menu and under the contributes. Um, through also the hamburger menu, but the event center item will just show directly on the list. And when you click on it, it takes you to the event center. And the third option is um, using this user profile menu here, and you see the event center here. So that is all I have for I mean, to present, and I would love your feedback. I'll hand it over to Imelda. Thank you, Gregory, but we still have Felix. Felix. Okay, yeah. All right, Felix here, guys. I will be talking about, um, I'll be highlighting a few um, things in the progress of work that we've done so far. And I will also be sharing information about the project timelines. So at the moment, we have begun building. Um, the last time we spoke to you, we were collecting feedback. We hadn't started um, the actual build. But now the engineers have started um, building the core infrastructure for the campaigns event platform. And I saw a question in the chat. Somebody was asking, where is the link to this software? Very soon, when it's ready, we will send it out to you. Um, we are also, so as mentioned by my colleagues, we're looking forward to hosting this new tool on a completely new namespace. So we are at the moment socializing our proposal to create this new namespace. And we welcome um, our ambassadors once again. They are here to support us. And we're very delighted that your work will be helping us navigate the needs and be able to create um, an opportunity for us to collect feedback from organizers across the various language plat platforms. Uh, our design research team are also conducting research to help us with future projects and the next steps on this project. Next slide, please. So what are we looking forward to doing in the next few months? We are planning to release a testable version um, so all of you can see and feel what we're talking about. So I, I like to call this the most tangible um, first um, piece of the software for you to test. And then um, we are also going to be working with testers to actually tell us how they feel about the first tangible um, use of the software that we send out. And then during that period, we will collect feedback and improve um, what we've done. So we will collect feedback, iterate on the software and come up with a V1 um, for the subsequent, subsequent months. Next slide. So why are you important? I don't like to say testers, I like to say you. Why are you important in this equation? You're very important in this equation because you will be influencing our products. And who better influence our products than you? Because you are the ones that are creating these campaigns. You're the one organizing within the space. And it's important that your, your input is made in the product. So V0, like I said, is just a first use of the tool. And we would employ your services in helping us test out the tool and to bring us all the feedback that we need. Why do we think that you are so critical to this? It's because creating a relationship with you in this first iteration, we could always come back to you and receive more input as and when we go forward with this tool. So your 
um, participation in the testing phases are very critical to the success of this project. We also want to learn from you because you know more than we do. You are, in the, you are already in the field doing this work and it's, it's important that your view is added to whatever we are doing here. So yeah, we need you, we definitely need you. Next slide. So just to give you a graphical representation of what I was describing before, V0 is the first uh, iteration of the tool. So we're building this first um, most tangible thing for you to see and feel and use. And in V0, we are hoping to provide you with the bare minimum, like the basic things, so that you can just see the trajectory that we're trying to take here. And then we will collect your feedback within V0. So three to five months, this most likely V0 will be out. And once we collect your feedback, we will launch in six to eight months the V1, which we are calling the minimum viable product, which is the first, um, I would say, much more sophisticated form of the, of the platform, ready for you to use and to give us more feedback. And then we will iterate on the tool again and provide you with a V2 release, which will include much more additional features um, in the future as per your suggestions and comments when we release V0 and V1. Next slide, please. Before we move on to the q and I'd, I'd like to invite our ambassadors to introduce themselves and to speak about um, the work that we're doing and to sort of like share a few logistical issues um, about this call. Thank you. And then over to the ambassadors. Georges, Anthony, Bashuta. Hello, hello, Marhaba. Okay, welcome, Marhaba. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we can take Georges, and then after that, Anthony, and then Bashuta. So, Georges, over to you. Okay. Bonsoir à tous. Je suis Georges, Fodop de Wikimedia Cameroun. Je suis en fait l'ambassadeur le, le, de la communauté francophone. Donc l'idée pour moi est d'être l'interface entre l'équipe de campagne et les communautés francophones. Et j'ai essayé durant toute la présentation de, de faire les traductions pour que vous puissiez avoir une idée de ce qui est fait. Et le travail qui a, qui a été réalisé jusqu'à présent est le fruit en fait des expériences que nous avons collectées auprès des organisateurs que vous êtes. Et vous avez une grande expérience de l'organisation des différents événements, les campagnes, les éditatons et autres. Et c'est sur cette base-là qu'on a pu réaliser le travail qui est fait. Ça, c'est une première rencontre. Il y aura d'autres rencontres totalement dans les différentes langues, dont totalement en français. Et l'idée à travers cette première rencontre était de vous présenter déjà ceci. On reviendra dessus dans nos différentes langues. Mais on voudrait surtout, pour la continuité, que vous puissiez véritablement euh, continuer en étant des personnes testeurs, si on peut dire ainsi, pour le, le, la plateforme qui va être euh, déployée dans les mois à venir. Donc, on voudrait véritablement vous associer au projet parce que c'est après les tests, vos commentaires, vos avis, que ce soit positif ou négatif, seront pris en compte et c'est sur cette base qu'on fera des améliorations sur le, la plateforme. Donc, on a véritablement besoin de vous. Donc, ne manquez pas de vous signaler si vous voulez être testeur, et vraiment, on le souhaite parce que vous êtes dans le, dans le domaine de, des, éve des événements et des campagnes. Donc, voilà un peu ce que je voulais dire de façon globale sur ce qui a été présenté aujourd'hui. Merci. Thank you, Georges. Anthony, you want to go? All right. Uh, thank you so much, Félix. Uh, Alright, habari ni wa heshimiwa wa swahili mimi naitwa Anthony Mtavangu na ni mwanzilishi mwenza wa group la Wikimedia Tanzania nadhani mnanifahamu kwa hiyo kwa sasa hapa nipo kama balozi wa miza za Wikimedia Foundation na tunachotaka kukifanya hapa tunataka kutengeneza mfumo ambao utasaidia wale wanaoandaa matukio kwa mfano editor phones uh, au ma, uh, mafundisho mbalimbali ama workshops uh, wa, wasipate ugumu sana katika kuorganize uh, hizi nani haya matukio. Kwa mfumo huu utakuwa upo kwenye wiki na watu watakuwa wana uwezo kuunda matukio mbalimbali mbali na kampeni na kualika wale uh, ambao wanataka washiriki 
na bila kupata usumbufu mkubwa wa kuwaadi uh, kuongeza uh, yale majina yao ya watumiaji na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo tutahitaji watu ambao wataanza kujaribu huu mfumo kama unafanya kazi vizuri na kushauri pia kama uh, nini kiongezwe, nini kipunguzwe, nini kiboreshwe. Kwa kama uta, uta, utapenda kwa mmoja wapo, tafadhali sema hapa kwenye chati na mimi nitakuadi katika orodha ya waswahili watakaopenda ku uh, kujaribu mfumo huu. Asante. Thank you Felix. Thank you Anthony Abashunda. Thank you, thank you for all. Uh, I'm happy to be with you. Wa ashkurukum ala al-hadur wa mushaarakati hada al-liqa li sharh awwal tajruba fi mubadara kabira jidan yani li tajmi'a kull ma sawfa naqum bihi haliyan nahnu ka mujtama' fi fi Wikimedia wa hadihi al-mubadara min مؤسسة ويكيبيديا لتسهيل العمل في المنظمين في المسابقات والفعاليات بصفة عامة والأمر هنا يترتب على إطلاق هذه المنصة خلال هذه السنة ونحن نتطلع جدا للمجتمعات وركزنا على المجتمعات في القارة الإفريقية والمجتمع العربي مهم جدا وأنا ك سفير حاليا للمجتمع العربي اقوم بتجميع كل الاراء و اللي نقوم ببلوره هذه المنصه لكي تكون ملائمه للمنظمين وللمشاركين وتكون مناسبه جدا لتسهيل كل النشاطات ثانك يو فيري ماتش All right. Thank you very much, Pashinda, and thank you, um, judges and Anthony as well. I'm handing over to um, Imelda to lead us through the Q&A session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ambassadors. Thank you, Felix. And we reached the end of our presentation for today.